so my name is Andy Odendahl. For those who have not met me, I'm a PhD candidate, um, closely sort of associated with the Bureau of Economic Research. And for you, those of you who don't know, sort of the Bureau of Economic Research specializes in um, creation of, of economic indicators and sort of economic um, news and reports. So the research question that you know, sort of I'm, I'm starting to address is we're trying to gauge the feasibility of constructing online sentiment indices using large amounts of text data um, and combining sort of, sentiment, sort of sentiment analysis. So the advantages are clear, right? So surveys can be expensive to conduct. Um, using news, we, we can sort of, we have large coverage uh, across all population. And most importantly, um, these confidence indices released by the BER is on a quarterly basis. You know, with news, we can have a much higher sort of finger on the pulse of the economy. So this idea of sort of sentiment and how it affects the economy is still a continuing debate, but there's these two, two um, ideologies, and, and those who, who studied economics will definitely remember old Keynes's uh, uh, concept of, of animal spirits. And he talks about, you know, most probably our decisions to do something positive, the full consequences of which will be drawn out over many days to come, can only be taken as a result of animal spirits, a spontaneous urge to action rather than inaction. And I think this is sort of like a thought experiment that he had. And the experiment is that these changes in the business cycle that occur according to the gut feel of people. So that's like the one uh, argument for you know, why confidence relates to economic uh, activity. The other one is called informational contagion. They call it the news effect, but I like to think about it as, as informational contagion. So this is this idea that economic agents have already internalized um, everything about the economy around the braai, you know, reading the newspaper, um, but it's not yet reflected in the hard statistics just purely due to the frequency. So you can see that the study that we're sort of following is this ideology. So like I say, the BER has got these confidence indices, and I think they, they're some of the most used economic indices in South Africa. Um, the nice thing about this indices, it's a quantitative way to incorporate consumer expectation into spending and savings models. So you can see how a much faster or higher frequency sort of index would be beneficial. So there's these questions that they ask, and the questions are things like, how do you expect a general uh, economic position to be in 12 months? It asks about, do you think it's a good time to buy certain products? And in the end, they collect this 2,500 sort of survey questions that goes out, and they, they construct the index known as a normalized sum of relative scores. So what this means is, you take the, the percentage positive minus the percentage negative, and you get a uh, score or an index value. So what the hell does R have to do with any of all of this? Um, so we've heard uh, last year at Saturday, we had Jenny Bryan and Julia Silgi speaking. And you know, that sort of actually led me on my path. That was a start. And you know, that's this sort of what um, led me to this path. So we're using sentiment analysis, and we're using the, the bag of words approach. So there's sort of one thing that I changed a little bit about Julia Silga's package and sort of a belief that I didn't really agree with. So I changed the, the way the sentiment um, index or dictionary works so that I can use it in a more functional approach. That also means that I can add my own dictionaries into the get sentiments method. And the reason for this is that sentiments, you know, there's positive, negative, which is qualitative, and you've got quantitative, which is like ones and fives and zeros. And the way they currently do it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't fit in with the framework. So we sort of changed that a bit around. This is sort of the data we're getting, nice PDFs. I'm using uh, PDF tools and, and uh, Poplar that, um, to, to take all these sort of sentiments. And then I get sort of these lists. So you can see that I can build my sentiment per article using whatever dictionary, non-dependent on whether it's a quantitative sentiment score or qualitative one. So to, to sort of get into the, like the, the cleaning sort of stuff, we, we sort of created or rely on two very strong sort of worker functions. 
So I use article to text, which can take HTML, JSON, or normal text, or PDF text, because that's sort of, I got my like, 1.2 million articles over 10 years, and I needed to clean them and just get them to a text format. So I'm using article to text for that, and then I'm piping it into my, my function called analyze article, which will actually analyze this article for all uh, given dictionaries, and I then analyze all these articles all over time. So essentially, um, this is sort of the, the construct of, of how I'm using analyze article. You can see I get you know, this sort of the words, the sentiments, uh, and the nice counts. Why? Because we construct an index as a normalized sum of those percentages, right? So I'm following the same methodology as the BR does, but I'm saying that an article is a small survey. Two seconds. So essentially, we get to this, which is our end goal to contract sentiments. We've been quite highly successful. Uh, and then I'm running out of time, so I need to conclude. So <laughs> I've, uh, I've, got, I've constructed a, a sort of package as this news R that I'll, I haven't uploaded it yet, and it's not freely available just due to us having to publish. But I'll be blogging over the next course in a couple of months and, and releasing some of these functions that I found quite useful that didn't work from tidy text for me, especially when it got to like really big data and nesting functions and things didn't work. I needed to use OCR technology, you know, because some PDFs didn't really extract well. I have a Kalman smoother that I use for the indices that actually spits out a nice tidy method for you. So if you're sort of interested in tracking this package, you can go to daeconomist.com. That's sort of just a personal website where you can find some of these uh, features. So thank you.